Let's have some fun. All right, the question is, name the letter of the alphabet that has never been used before on the periodic table. Quickly, quickly, quickly. If you guess the letter J, you are correct. Hello guys, once again, I have the periodic table up on the screen for you. So we're gonna take a look at some of the trends and characteristic traits that the periodic table has to provide. What do you notice as you look at this screen? Take a look at it. What do you notice? Well, one of the things you should notice is that there is some color coding going on, and this is a reflection of what's found in your PowerPoint slide. As a matter of fact, you should notice that on the left-hand side of that green-looking block, those are purple elements, and they're purple because it is called, those are noted as your metals. To the right of the staircase, in this yellow section here, you'll notice that those are all your non-metal elements. And then on that staircase are your metalloids, also known as your semi-metals. Now, it's going to be very important that you know where these metals are located, non-metals and metalloids, because as I ask you questions on the next handout, you're going to want to have this image present in front of you. To show you the handout that I'm referring to, these are your guided notes here. Okay, and we kind of talked about these guided notes before. This is from chapter four. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this up on the board for a second to kind of show you a couple of things. First off, there are seven periods. So your, your periodic table is classified into periods and groups. Periods are horizontal rows, meaning they go straight across. And I'll demonstrate that for you momentarily. And with your groups, there are 18 of them, and they're vertically columns that go up and down. So if we look back at our image on the prior screen here, I will show you there where you have your seven periods and actually hydrogen is on this side over here at the top and it's on the other side on this over here above the halogen group. I'm going to talk about that, you know, shortly in terms of why hydrogen will appear twice on various periodic tables that you will come across on the internet or even your textbook. But there are seven periods, and they are numbered on the side of your periodic table, and they go straight across. So all the elements that are in period one, including hydrogen, is just hydrogen and helium. If you look at period two right here, going straight across, the elements that are in period two consist of lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. Now, if you look then at period three, the same format will follow. You start off with sodium and magnesium all the way until you get to argon. That's period three. Now, as we go a little bit closer here, you'll notice that on the tops, you'll have group numbers. And those group numbers are no represented by one, two, three, all the way to 18. And then you'll also see some that are noted in Roman numerals. Those are two different denotations according to the IUPAC and the American usage. The IUPAC is the international standard notation that you would use across the country, you know, whether you're in the United States, Mexico, um, South America, Africa, Asia, Europe, you will be denoting the numbers 1 through 18. But to keep things kind of consistent here um, in terms of group numbers, I'm going to be referring to the IUPAC notation, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 18. Now, let's go ahead and evaluate using your worksheet where the groups are, because there are names that you need to know for each of these groups. So on your worksheet here, okay, you'll notice that I've already labeled some of these group names. The ones that we haven't done, I'm going to let you complete them. So if you look in group 1, right here, or according to your chart, or your notes, excuse me, group one elements are called the alkali metals. Alkali metals. Alkali metals are very unique for a number of reasons. They are unique because they have a positive charge. They also are some of the elements that you would find in your body. 
And those are also the same elements that you need in terms of electrolytes. So group one is referred to your alkali metal groups. Group two, right here, those are called your alkaline earth metal groups. Alkaline earth metal, that's typically associated with minerals that you need in your body in terms of, you know, help having healthy bones. You'll see there's calcium there, magnesium, strontium, barium. So you have a lot of good group, two groups of elements that your body does need in terms of from an anatomy and physiology perspective. So groups one and group two are very unique um, element, groups of elements. Again, that's the alkaline earth metals. Now, the group that's right here in the middle, groups 3 through 12, those are referred to as your transition metal groups. Transition metals are noted as transition because they change. They change their charges. We'll get into charges in a couple of weeks, but for right now, the transition metal groups have multiple charges. Not all the elements in that group do, just some of them. In the next group, uh, groups 13, 14, 15, 16, those groups are named according to the head leader in that particular category. So, for instance, the group of elements here in group 13 are called the boron family or the boron group. Some books will refer to them as families also, but they mean the same thing. Group 14 here is called the carbon family, headed by carbon. Group 15 is called the nitrogen family, and group 16 is the oxygen family. Now, when we get to group 17, this group right here is called the halogens. The halogens is named that because of the characteristic traits that they exhibited also. This particular group has some overrated elements, including fluorine, okay? There you have chlorine, which you know chlorine is often associated with, you know, the swimming pool because they put chlorine in the water. But you also may have heard of iodine, and you know that you need iodine in your diet because it helps to prevent goaters. You may see that in um, various countries where they lack iodine supplementation, so they'll have these big uh, goaters that look like lumps in their throat. But I want to say something a little bit about fluorine. Fluorine is often associated with toothpaste, but is really overrated in terms of being used in toothpaste um, because if you notice on the back of a box of um, toothpaste pack, it'll tell you that you can actually OD, particularly little kids. So you do not want to allow your children to brush their teeth unattended for because just even a pea size of uh, fluorine can actually cause major problems. Now, when you look at the last group here, group 18, those are known as your noble gas groups. The noble gas groups are unique because they pretty much don't associate themselves with other elements on the periodic table. They're kind of like your loners. Now, you'll notice below there are two groups that were extracted from the periodic table. They extracted them because the periodic table would have been gigantic. So to shorten the periodic table, they took them out and put them down below. Now, if we wanted to insert them back into their proper places, they would be part of period 6 and period 7. This group here is called the lanthanide series, and the last group is called the actinide series. Again, you can find those names also on the periodic table that is provided in your guided notes here. Lanthanide series, actinide series. They're called those names because the element that is to the left of it is called lanthium, and Actinium. So that's where they get the name lanthanide and actinide. Now, if you flip over your notes to the next section here, you're going to find a couple questions that we'll need to kind of go through to answer in terms of knowing where things are. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt. So I want you to use your chart, your periodic table, to answer these questions. So right here, I had mentioned to you briefly about knowing the difference between the metals, nonmetals, and metalloids because in your, on your periodic table they're color coded. You'll want to make sure that you can also color code your chart as well. Okay. Characteristics of metals and nonmetals. So if you want to kind of use this as a point of reference for your notes, you sure can. And as a matter of fact, as you know, metals are solids, but your nonmetals can also be solids and gases. Appearance-wise, they're very shiny and they uh, have luster, but your nonmetals are kind of dull. Metals do conduct heat and electricity, whereas your nonmetals do not. 
So this is just a summary of everything that we've discussed in terms of your metals and non-metals. But now as a semi-metal or metalloid, they have characteristic traits of both of them because they kind of go midway. So for instance, if I were to look back at my periodic table again at that staircase, and make sure you have this written out too in your notes, there are eight of those elements that are very important. Boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, terillium, polonium, and acetate. Those are the eight elements that are called your semi-metals, also known as your metalloids. Now, let's take a look at this periodic table. And I'm going to ask you a couple questions. So put your periodic table uh, somewhere in your view so that we can go through this particular chart to kind of analyze the questions that I'm going to ask you. Okay? So the first question that you have is going to ask you to determine if we're talking about a group of elements or a period of elements. Remember, on your periodic table, to help you out, okay, I'm just going to use this one to kind of give you a perspective of what we're looking for right here. Okay. I'm going to number this one, and you will notice that this is the same periodic table that's in your guided notes. Periods go straight across, and there are seven periods on your periodic table, okay? And your groups, they go up and down, and there are 18 groups. Now, if you look back at your sheet right here, okay, and since I can't put them both up at the same time, I'm just going to read the question, and then that way you can fill in your worksheet as we look at this particular chart here. This is going to kind of help you out. Cont okay, so we're talking about the first question. Tell me if we're referring to a group or period number. It contains carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Are we talking about a period of elements or a group of elements? If you said period, you are correct, and we're talking about period two. Remember, all those elements are side by side, going in the same direction. So we're talking about period two. So on your sheet here for your notes, be sure that you put down period two. The next one begins with helium. Right up here. So if it begins with helium, that means we're talking about group of elements. We're referring to group 18. The next question, the alkali metals are located in, well, here are my alkali metals. They're in group one. And then the last question, it says ends with neon. So if I go all the way across and it ends with neon, obviously we're talking about period two. The next set of questions. I want you to identify the type of element that we have. Let's go ahead and start with this particular part of your assignment. We're looking at calcium. What is this particular element? It is an alkali earth metal. It's part of group two, the alkali earth metals. Next question, iron. It's right here. It's part of the transition metal group. Xenon is over here. That's part of your noble gas group. Sodium, right here, is part of your alkali metal group. Chlorine and bromine are part of the halogens. All right, now, the next part of your assignment, I want you to give the chemical symbol and name of the element described by the following. So, for instance, if I ask you to look at group 14, so here's group 14 right here, and then period two, it's kind of like a GPS, where you're going to kind of scan through period two until you land right there at group 14. So the first question says group 14, period two, you land right there in carbon. 
So that particular element is carbon. Again, group 14, period two, carbon. The next one, a noble gas, which is over here, in period one. Well, remember how we talked about hydrogen is right above that, and if we go straight over, all the way over to this side, we find ourselves looking at helium. That's a noble gas in period one. Next one, an alkali metal in period three. So here are your alkali metals. You scroll all the way down till you get to period three. We're back to sodium. Next question, group two. These are your groups right here, but period four. So if I go over to period four, land it into group two, we're talking about calcium. Group 13, period four. So scroll over, period four, land at group 13. That is gallium. And the last, oh, actually not the last one, uh, halogens right there in period five. So scroll on over right there. You end up with iodine. And then the last question, group four, period four, titanium. Now, the last questions that are in the, on that worksheet, I want you to determine whether or not it's a metal, non-metal, or metalloid. So, to help you out, I'm going to put my colorful chart back up here. And we're going to zoom in on our elements here. And now, I want you to tell me if we're talking about an element that is a metal, non-metal, or metalloid. All right. If it's located in group two, group two, those are metals. And so just look at the color coding too. So the elements that are in group two right here, those are metals. Next one, if it conducts electricity, what are we talking about? Metals, non-metals, or metalloids? Metals is correct. Chlorine, what is that? That's over here in the yellow section. Those are your non-metals. Arsenic. Right here in the green, on that staircase, arsenic is a metalloid. An element that is not shiny, well, you know that is non-metals. Those are non-metals. Oxygen or nitrogen. They're over here in the yellow section. Those are your non-metals. And the last question is aluminum. You use that every day. If you're preparing your food and wrapping it up, you know, that is a metal. This is just a short video on trying to look at the periodic table and analyzing their characteristic traits to know where things are located. Use this video to help you once again on homework problems and test questions. If you need to go back through this video again, rewind, repeat, and so on. Thank you for watching.